Please stand for flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the town, because when you incorporate, you have to come up with a legal name. And that's where the name Thompson Lakes came from, from that incorporation. <coughs> and that was back in 1895. So the history goes back later. Besides, all the stuff he does for us. Um, but I don't want to ask that. Um, I've always considered it a great honor and privilege to be able to um, serve this particular town. The fact that it's the town I grew up in, that my family has been involved with for many generations, made it only that more special to give my time and my best effort to uh, to the causes, environmental especially, uh, environmental causes, to, um, on behalf of the town and its citizens and its actual landscape. The town of Pompton Lakes has been geographically very fortunate over all these millennia. We were not the first people who settled here and we won't be the last people to live here, which is one of the reasons that makes taking care of the environment so dramatically important for all of us. We intend to pass our legacy down as many generations, hopefully, to come as have gone before us. And for my part, I'd like to feel that I've made a, a small difference in that direction, maintaining and preserving the, the environment that we've all been fortunate enough to have. Thank you. I'm going to let, leave it up to you if you want to say something now or in your reports. How would you like to do that? Well, it seems timely, so. All right. Yeah, so if you want to start, okay. I, I want to congratulate Ed. Um, I know we've spoken over the years about the history, but each time you talk, there's always a, a, another morsel that, that comes out. Uh, we will truly miss you, but hopefully you're not going too too far. And we'll be able to rely on your institutional memory because at times it's been invaluable. So we wish you much luck in your retirement. Congratulations. Excuse me. Ted, uh, known you a long time. When I was in the police department, if I needed any information, I know even where to go. Uh, like you said, your family has a great history in this town including where the fire department is right now. Uh, that was a family, uh, I guess your grandfather's yeah. and house, and uh, now it's the fire department, and they were involved in that right from the beginning. I congratulate you. I hope you're well, and I hope that uh, you have a great retirement. Thank you. Jeff? Ed, I haven't had the chance to know you as well as the other members of the council, but I do thank you for all of the hard work that you've put in, and I wish you the best in your retirement. Frank? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ed, again, uh, congratulations on uh, well-deserved retirement. Uh, thank you for all your service and years on volunteerism uh, to the borough of Pompton Lakes. Uh, I wish you much uh, health and success in your retirement, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Ed. Uh, Lauren's been working with you for many years and, and heard many stories. Uh, so I wish you the best of luck, and I'm, I'm sure we'll see, see probably even more now that you have more time. Thank you. Uh, Ed, we've known each other since I you know, got involved with the EPC and the Environmental or the Open Space Committee back in 2008, and um, I've never stopped learning from you this entire time. Um, you know, you might not remember the conversation, but I remember during one of the, um, the river cleanups, we were standing in the water, and you were pointing out these insects, and I couldn't even remember what kind of insects they were, and you were just like, this is an indication of the water quality in the, in the Wanakee River, because these insects are able to, to thrive in them. And just like that like level of detail and level of knowledge sort of encaps encapsulates your entire career here. And you've, you know, you've been a great public servant and, um, you know, wish you the best of luck in retirement. I don't know which side of the river we were standing. <laughs> you probably, <laughs> you probably <laughs> do. <don't. laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep, there you go. <laughs> don't forget a thing. <laughs>
made my career on that video. Well, that's true, yes. Okay. Uh, again, thank you, Ed, for all your service. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to open the meeting for public comments. So moved. Councilman, Second. Councilman Lyne, Councilman Jacobetta. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address? Mr. Hittner? You're first. Yeah, Randy Hittner, 443 Muckler. All I'd like to say is um, Ed has helped me out so much in the questions that I've had. And uh, I just want to also wish him the best of luck in his retirement. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Maria Kent, 17 Glen Court. Um, I, I want to also congratulate Ed. When I, when I moved here and I became involved uh, under Mayor Merrin in 1992 as uh, getting onto the Environmental Committee, he introduced me to Ed, and from that time on, my children were still little, and the, the smaller one who's now on your, uh, admin, on your uh, uh, one of the boards, one of your uh, planning boards, um, used to go into the town hall with his blanket, and you know, he that's how he remembers town, even though he's a big guy now and pretty smart. But Ed was always a very special guy, and um, dating myself, he used to allow people to smoke. So Ed always smoked pipe, <laughs> and, and um, it was always like a, a capturing scent. It wasn't. It was very nice, actually. And my children will always remember uh, the smell of Mr. Merrill's pipe. So, um, but Ed's been a, tr a tremendous asset to this community. I've learned a tremendous um, amount of information and just about how to handle yourself, um, ways to think about things. Uh, he brought. He used to bring his poetry to the uh, Lincoln School PTA when I was on the PTA executive board and I ran many of the different uh, activities. We always had something of poetry about environment or about the earth or about the sky uh, from Ed. He provided us a wealth of information about the history of the community and um, Ed's not a real big guy but he had really big shoes to fill just listening to the way his ancestors uh, brought this town together how lucky we are today and Ed, they are looking down at you today and they are not disappointed in any way shape or form I want to personally thank him for all the help uh, he was never afraid to talk about DuPont he was not afraid to talk about flooding and um, whether you agree with the way things went or not if it wasn't for Ed Merrill and I was there many of the things would not have happened uh, would it, this would have been a different town we may have had 287 run right through us uh, he was an ad advocate for the environment, for protection, and he, uh, not only does he love the town, but he loves the rivers. And the water quality, as uh, Councilman DeLine said, was always first and foremost. So we've been very fortunate to have him here. I hope you don't, you're not going anywhere. We still have lots of volunteer projects, and I uh, hope to be involved with it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public like to address? Ms. Collette. Thank you, Hi, um, Abby Novak, 128 Whitney Avenue. Um, I've known of um, Ed my whole life because my mom and, and dad moved here back in the 1960s. And my mom joined the Women's Club. And through the Women's Club, she um, knew Ed's mom. And so I was aware of the rich history that the Merle family had and has. And um, I was became more acquainted with Ed during the time of um, the serenity issue. <laughs> And I remember, like, oh, I can't believe what's going to happen. And um, I knew who to call about where everything was going to happen. And, and it, w it was wonderful for me to learn about the environment of the town that I grew up in. So I really didn't even have the rivers named straight when I first started out. And um, through that, that uh, wake-up call, I realized you can't take the environment for, for granted. And a lot of us got involved <coughs> in the Environmental Committee, and it led to the Open Space Committee which led to the acquisition of the Willow Field. And there's, a, I mean, there's so many things that I know that Ed knew about that I could not believe, and I mean, he has a wonderful memory. So anyway, thank you, Ed. Thank you for all that you've done. I'm really worried that you're retiring, but you deserve it. And I hope that we can call upon you when we need to. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else from the report would like to address? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public session? So much. Council President Riker? Yes, Councilman Bay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Approval of minutes. Motion to approve the following minutes. Regular meeting minutes of October 10th, 2018. So moved. Councilman DeLine? Second. Councilman, <coughs> Councilwoman Palabori, all in favor? Aye. 
Against? Abstain there. Abstain or your presence? Present. Present. Um, okay. Uh, bills and claims. Motion to approve the following bills as listed below. I have a motion? So moved. Councilman DeWine? Second. Councilman Bay? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Petitions we have none. Consent agenda. Whenever you're ready. Okay, I've done that. No. Whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough Council makes has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions, whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough Council makes does not desire to move resolutions for individual action from that agenda. Now, therefore, we resolve that the following resolution on the consent agenda is hereby approved. Resolution 18-188. Can I have a motion? So moved. Councilman Line. Councilman Giacometta. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Or any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay. Ordinances, whenever you're ready. Ordinance for first reading and introduction. These ordinances will final will be final adoption will be on November 7th. Ordinance 18-23, an ordinance amending section 190-83A and 190-84A, adding block 6300, lot 7, 11 Atlantic Avenue to downtown redevelopment area in the DRA-1 zone. You want to say anything on that? The, uh, the ordinance title does, does read, that what it does, uh, uh, Mayor, is it adds block 6300, lot 7, which is 11 Lennox Ave, to the zoning requirements that are in the downtown redevelopment zone since the property has been determined to be a property in need of redevelopment. Uh, that determination has been made by the planning board. Yes. So that was made by the planning board. Can I have a motion to approve the ordinance in 1823 for introduction? So moved. Council President Riker? Second. Councilman Bay? Roll call, please. Councilman Giacometta? Yes. Councilwoman Polidori? Yes. Councilwoman Riker? Yes. Councilman Bay? Yes. Councilman Bay? Yes. Councilman Zalon? Yes. Ordinance? 18-24, an ordinance replacing Borough Administrative Code Section 7-7.1 through 7-7.10. Mayor, the, uh, this ordinance replaces current chapters of the code dealing with traffic controls for streets and highways that are under construction or maintenance within the borough. Now, the changes that are being proposed were requested by the chief of police. Yes, and just to add to that, we're looking to uh, beef up our, our uh, downtown uh, ordinances, uh, so we'll be putting out a lot of them in the next couple months. Motion to approve ordinance number 18-24 for introduction. So moved. Councilman Jacanetta. Second. Second. Council President Ranker. Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Jacanetta. Yes. Councilwoman Polidori. Yes. Councilwoman Riker. Yes. Councilman Bannon. Yes. Councilman Bay. Yes. Councilman Delon. Yes. Ordinance 18-25, an ordinance amending administrative code section 7-13H with respect to metered parking on Fridays. Mayor, this particular ordinance would change the time for metered parking on Fridays from 9 p.m. to 6 p.m. if adopted. So we spoke about this, that there's an old ordinance on the books that shows just Friday nights meters go till 9 o'clock. It hasn't been enforced in many, many years. But we had one uh, young new officer that didn't know that and went out and ticketed a lot of residents. So we are changing the ordinance to read con consistent with the rest of the week. All, every, all the meters going till 6 o'clock. <coughs> okay, motion to approve ordinance 1825 for introduction. Summer. Council President Riker. Second. Councilman Bennett. Roll call, please. Councilman Jackanet. Yes. Councilwoman Polidori? Yes. Councilwoman Riker? Yes. Councilman Bennett? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Fay? Yes. Councilman Zaline? Yes. Ordinance for second reading and final adoption. This ordinance has been advertised and posted on a municipal bulletin board. Ordinance 18-22, an ordinance amending the redevelopment plan for downtown Compton Lakes amending ordinance number 09-01 by adding certain properties, block 6300, lot 7, 11 Atlantic Avenue to downtown complex redevelopment. Uh, same thing, right? It's, sim it's, it's actually self-explanatory. I mean, what this would do is amend uh, the ordinance that was passed by the mayor and council back in 2009 that established the downtown Pompton Lakes redevelopment plan. 
by adding to it the property that's designated and indicated on the ordinance. Okay. Motion to open the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 18-22. So moved. Councilman Dorn. Second. Councilman Venon. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address just this ordinance? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 18-22? So moved. Council President Riker, Councilman DeWine, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion to approve Ordinance 18-22 for final adoption. So moved. Councilman Begg? Second. Councilwoman Saldori? Roll call, please. Councilman Jacquinette? Yes. Councilwoman Polidor? Yes. Councilwoman Riker? Yes. Councilman Venn? Yes. Councilman Begg? Yes. Councilman Dorn? Yes. Okay, that's it. Okay, under my report, we'll start with the motion. A motion to appoint Laura Jennings to the position of Commissioner, Member Class C, on the Historic Commission to fill an unexpired term through December 31st, 2021. So moved. Uh, Councilman DeWine. Uh, can I have a second? second. Well, I, I was the second, but okay. Oh, He's the second. second. Uh, I, I was the first. Oh, okay. So you don't have a second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Against? Motion to appoint Keith Locke Wood to the position of alternate number two on the Historic Commission to fill unexpired term through December 31st, 2018. Can I have a second? Second. Councilman Dorine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okay. <clears throat> Under my report, uh, this was a little busy weekend this weekend for a lot of different reasons. Uh, myself and Council President Riker attended a, an Eagle ceremony. I always enjoy attending those Eagle ceremonies. We have a very active troop. In the last year and a half, I've probably attended 11 Eagle Scouts. That's a huge number for a small town and a small troop, so I give them all the credit in the world. It seems every kid that joins the Boy Scouts over there becomes an Eagle Scout, which is great. So congratulations to them. Uh, I had a meeting with the Highlands Council, which is the council that it was put in place uh, probably about 10 years ago. Uh, they want to come reintroduce ourselves to the town and see how they could help us in the future plans. So we had a nice meeting with uh, the executive director there. The, uh, I attended the Halloween hunt, which is always a great event put on by our rec department. You know, we bought, she, I think she told me we bought 600 pumpkins and we gave out 600 pumpkins, so that means there were 600 people there, I'm guessing. Um, all volunteers, they do all the work. It's a great event. The kids come down and, and uh, find a pumpkin in the, in, the, in the dark and then get some free goodies and some food. So I always thank the, the recreation for what, doing what they do. They do a great job with that. The Girl Scouts had a nice uh, festival down this, there this weekend at Hirschfield Park. All the Girl Scouts turned out. They always do a nice job with that. I attended the um, Harvest Festival at the church. Uh, another nice event, beautiful day, people walking around. Uh, we will, we're still in negotiation and we'll be having a meeting next Friday with the radio. Hopefully this will be our last meeting. One way or another, we'll make a decision on what's going on with the radio station. Uh, things are still looking promising, and hopefully before the new year we have we have some news about the radio station. Uh, and that is my report. Council President Riker. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I want to reiterate my congratulations to Ed Merrill. Um, I think he's gone by now, but um, Maria Ken failed to mention that there is a community retirement dinner coming up to him in a couple of weeks at max. And if you have any questions, I think it's November, Thursday evening, November 8th. Next Thursday, the next Thursday. Right, yes. November 8th, November, right? Yes. So if anyone is interested, I think Maria, is the, Maria and Julie uh, uh, Dancos are the uh, contact people on, on that. Um, I also want to um, uh, extend my condolences to uh, Kevin Boyle and his family, I know we extended them to, to you when you weren't here, but now that you're back, uh, we're happy to have you back, but we uh, really want to share our condolences with you in person. Um, I know your dad had a nice long life, and uh, it was a really quite a um, large attended wake, but we just want to extend them to you in person, so we're sorry for your loss. Um, Many of you know that I have, over the years, um, been uh, very passionate about, about bike helmets and bike safety. And unfortunately, bike safety really hit home with me um, last week. Um, some of you up here know 
that I'm very involved in the mediation and mediation arbitration community, the ADR community professionally. And I had the privilege of serving as a president of what's called the Justice Garibaldi in a Court, which is an ADR in a court named for the first female justice of the New Jersey Supreme Court. Unfortunately, the person who was the current president got killed in a bike accident last week. And he was an avid cyclist. He was a safe cyclist. And he was, I guess, in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some of you may have read about it. He was, besides being a phenomenal attorney and a very active member of our ADR community, he was also probably the most talented lawyer I had the privilege of knowing. His name was Nick Stevens. He was head of volunteer lawyer for the arts. He was a very accomplished musician in his own right. He had a band. And he had endless energy. He was president of the Duke Alumni Association. And just on and on, he left behind a wife and two children. And unfortunately, this bike safety really hit home. You may have read about it in the paper. So whatever we can do here, I know our police are fabulous. They're committed to it. But whatever we can do as a community to re-energize the notion of bike safety, I beg us to please do that. On more normal parts of my report, the bid did meet in their regularly scheduled meeting. The things that they appear to be focused on mostly right now is they're really trying to improve the holiday lights along Wanneke Avenue as we begin to redevelop and bring more and more people into town. They've allocated more monies and a lot of discussion and care in terms of how they're going to do the holiday lights. There's also an increased awareness, again, the bid in working in conjunction with the council and the chief of police to really crack down on the speeding through the pedestrian walkways. So please, yes, there is heightened awareness. The police are out in much greater force. But besides that, please be very careful and please stop in the walkway for pedestrians. Unfortunately, our students, especially our high school students, go running across the Wanneke Ave and they don't always use the walkways. We are trying to get that message across to them, but be particularly careful during that time. And obviously we have Halloween coming up in the next week and please be very careful with that. The mayor mentioned the Eagle Scout. He brings a special something to the Eagle Scout ceremonies in that he himself is or was, how do you describe it? Is. Is an Eagle Scout. No, was an Eagle Scout. Always an Eagle Scout. I was not an Eagle Scout. I was a brownie. I didn't stay in the Girl Scouts that long. I enjoyed selling the cookies, but that was about it. But the ceremony was constantly, I've gone a bunch of times with him and the ceremonies are really quite moving. This one in particular was really indicative of Pompton Lakes in that there was such an attendance at the ceremony was a mixture of ages, a mixture of cultures. This young man was not only honored by us, the members of the governing body, but also by the Marines and the Masons. And it was really just a very moving and high spirited evening. So thank you for including me in that. The mayor went through so many of the activities in town in the last week. You know it's fall in Pompton Lakes. You know it's pumpkin season in Pompton Lakes. But I just wanted to point out, Councilwoman Polidori and I had the privilege of serving donuts to the kids and their parents. 
and um, you can tell I have never waitressed it because I can't <laughs> keep up with you. You did fine. <laughs> but, but it was a lot of fun. And it, tell the rec committee next year, buy more chocolate because those are the donuts that went the, went the fastest. Uh, the only, I think, event that I think you failed to mention on your list of many was the pasta dinner yes. that the uh, firemen uh, had. And... Uh, that they said they hadn't done it in a while, so they had lost a little momentum in terms of uh, the number of people that attended, but all those who attended and a bunch of us up here were, were part of that. Um, it was a lovely event. It was really a, a family event, and, and they're hoping that they'll do it again next year and get, get that many um, uh, more people to uh, participate. Um, it is gone, right? Okay. Yes. Well, I, I will say this one thing. I, uh, one of my children is very much an environmentalist, very much an outdoorsy person. And um, I've, I've been exposed to all sorts of things that I would not have, have um, if she hadn't taken that path. And when everyone was making those comments to, um, to Ed, it made me think of one of her favorite, uh, favorite phrases, which is... Um, those who wander are not always lost, and, and I think that that environmental phrase really works for Ed. I know that. Hopefully, you'll see this on the day. So, Mayor, that's my report. All right, just to follow up, I did forget to mention uh, December 1st is our Toys for Tot train coming in. Uh, we always do a, a great job of filling up the uh, train with toys, and the uh, Marines actually tell me it's one of their busiest stops, and they stop a lot of different places. So, let's keep that moving forward. There are drop-off. We'll probably have a drop-off here, I'm sure, and most of the businesses in town will have a drop-off, so make sure you drop off your toys for the tots there. Unwrapped gifts, uh, new. Um, also, don't forget our holiday strolls. Also, that same night, December 1st, it'll start at 4.30 with a parade and uh, a tree lighting ceremony around 5.36 uh, here at, Bur uh, at the library. I'm sorry, at the library. So keep those dates moving. I, I know that... Uh, we usually have conflicts with uh, many sports events this year. It looks like we <coughs> will not. So um, it looks like a good stroll and a good event. Uh, Council Mayor, can I just? Sure. Um, at the bid meeting, uh, they did circulate to those businesses that were present um, a list of those who are willing to be drop off points. However, at the bid meeting, we don't have all the businesses. So if for some reason uh, you haven't been asked or haven't been approached, um, this year Tim Trost is asking for the names of businesses, as many as we can have that will participate. He asked to please um, please identify yourself so they can they can have as many drop-off points in town as, as possible. Okay, Councilman Dwan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, October has been a very busy month with all sorts of events, especially on the weekend. So I'm not going to recover, but, you know, most of those events that you talked about, um, I was also at, which, you know, is one of the things that makes Pompton Lakes a great town because there is just so much um, to, inter you know, interact with our residents uh, during. Um, one thing that I think was forgotten about was also the classic car show on the 14th, I which I won't forget because I think that was the last warm day we had um, mm -hmm. be before everything turned cold. Um, the, the other thing, a um, couple other things going on, um, I've been in communication with Passaic County Planning. Um, if, if you've been on the trails, there's a number of kiosks that the county actually put up. Um, the maps have gotten sort of weathered and beaten. It's tough for them to sort of take ownership of, of it. So the Trails Maintenance Committee is talking to them about getting the keys. So if we need to switch out maps and things like that, we're able to do so and we can add in, you know, the hike events and things like that we're, we're doing. Um, you know, and, and that leads to a point that I think I was remiss in, in, in mentioning when talking to Ed. Um, you know, those trails exist um, largely because Ed wandered through the woods and we kind of determined, you know, what, what would be a natural set of trails to go through. Um, so, you know, as we've I improved these trails, um, you know, one of the things that we, we, we made sure to do, the Trails Committee, um, was to give a little bit of homage to Ed and his efforts um, you know, of him in the South End Committee that, that really works to protect these trails. So, you know, the, the Blue Trail, which is aquatic park, it's actually owned by the state county, is actually also known as the Merrill Trail. So, because he, he did really leave such a, a legacy of it. So, as we switch out those maps and we've improved the system, um, you know, those maps are going to reflect the, the names that ultimately those trails have, including, including the, the trail named after Ed. Um, and then um, the last other thing was, 
Um, you know, as been going on for the last year or so, um, we've been working on that, that complete streets plan, which I think goes to Terry's point about improving uh, bicycle and pedestrian safety through town, um, making facilities that sort of provide a little bit of protection and awareness for people. Um, we had gotten a draft from Michael Baker. I reviewed it, sent some comments back. Um, but they're, they're, so they're doing some edits. Um, the stakeholder committee is going to get a chance to review that. Um, probably at the beginning of November, and we're shooting for a stakeholder meeting at the end of November to review it one more time from a technical standpoint, and then we're just going to put it out on, on the public for their reaction, um, you know, let them kind of take a look at it, get comments back, and then eventually, hopefully, um, bring it to the planning board for an adoption into the into the master plan. Good. And that concludes my report. Hey, thank you. Uh, just a side note about your about the uh, the trails. I ran into a, a resident from Wayne who stopped me, who was a friend of mine, and said, you know, I had the chance to walk your trails because I saw them on a county site. You know, they, they tied them in, I guess, somehow. Mm -hmm. And she said it was a nice, a nice walk, and enjoyable to do, and it was just long enough to do what I needed to do. And she said I would definitely come back and use those trails. So that's a nice thing to hear from people yeah. out, out of town. Uh, that's always a nice thing. Uh, Councilman Jackadetta. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple uh, quick reminders. Uh, it's on the sheet here, too. The Recycling Center uh, is going to be closed uh, this coming Tuesday, October 30th. Again, this coming Tuesday, October 30th, uh, they're going to be replacing the co uh, compactors uh, that crushed the, the, the paper and that, so they needed the space and needed the time. Nobody would be in there, so they're going to be doing that. We're going to have new ones. Also wanted me to remind everybody, of course, some of the people know, or they quick to know that uh, leaf pickup has started already. So your first two pickups, uh, south end and the north end, are Monday and Tuesday, and then your leaf pickup is Thursday and Friday. So this is going to continue all the way to the last pickup will be the 7th of December. Right, it'll switch, right. So December 7th will be the last one, and starting December 10th, Monday, it goes back to twice a week. So just remember that, just didn't want to be the note for everybody, give a reminder. I uh, wanted to uh, say myself, uh, Bill Begg uh, and Al Evangelist attended the Passaic County OEM uh, meeting today uh, with the LAPC. Uh, a good point was brought up, uh, I should be noted, uh, in regards to the CERP. Uh, they were saying the county is getting stuff in the state. They wanted uh, all the different CERPs that are out there to start uh, filling out forms sending the forms down to show whatever services they do or anything that comes up. And it should be noted that, you know, Punk Lakes is high on that list because we do a lot. Our show is a very active team, uh, you know, with Al and everybody running it. Uh, so I just wanted to throw out a commendation, you know, to these guys, what a good job they do. Uh, you know, so it was noted to me that about that, so which is good, and we're always up on that. Uh, so it was brought up today at the OEM meeting. Uh, and the last thing I had is uh, the bid bucks also, they had the sale there, and that went pretty well. I mean, it was a pretty long line, and the councilman was there. Uh, apropos, of, are you finished? Or? Yeah, that's okay. the end. The, and the other thing that happened in the um, meeting is that there was a, a move to uh, increase the number of sales and increase the number of bid bucks available. Yeah. Because they, they feel Good that success. this is really the best thing we can do for our businesses. So. Yeah. Um, I don't think they've announced any of the dates going forward, for, uh, but as soon as we get them, we will share them. Up. Yes. That's what I have. Thank you. You, have it you are correct. Our CERT team is very active, and they do a lot of uh, hours. They put a lot of hours in. Just in yeah. the day alone, they put in a lot of hours, you know, in doing what they have to do. So if, we're, if they're keeping record of that, that's a good thing for us. Oh, well, yeah, because uh, the state wants to know. Right. Because that's something that the state, you know, because they give out a lot of trailers, give out a lot of equipment. They want to know if these equipment is being used, is it active. And we have one of the most overactive CERT teams. That's good. Around That's something. Which is good. So. And I'm going to just re remind everybody what you just said. The recycling center will be closed this Tuesday. So please do not go there, see the fence, and throw garbage over the fence because you don't want to come back. Uh, and I know it's going to happen anyway. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, just let us get one day to do some work in there, pass it around, put it anywhere you want so people know the recycling center will be closed this Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, Council, Councilwoman Haldori. Thank you. Uh, I have some progress on some work to report on for the MUA. There was an issue, some of you may have seen a uh, manhole cover that was roped off with some caution tape. I had worked with John Wegley to get down to Carlo, oh, that was at Carlo Field, sorry, uh, to Carlo Field to investigate what the problem was. 
It turns out that there was a pump that was not functioning properly, so they did get a pump truck down there today to correct the issue, and they have it up and running. Everything is fine, back in working order, and ready for football this weekend. So that issue Football is has changed, you see, it has changed their schedule for this weekend because of the storms and yeah. everything until Friday. But we wanted to make sure we were yes. prepared. So. <laughs> um, so that's that has been rectified. We also, I've been talking to Kevin about getting someone from the DPW down to the library to help with some minor repairs that Michael has reported. And we will be taking care of that shortly. Also, in regards to the library, they have some announcements on some programs that are taking place. There are still some open spaces for uh, a few of the different story time programs that they're running throughout the month. And registration opens on October 29th for the next Read to a Dog, which is scheduled for November 7th. And also coming up, in addition to the other wonderful events that we have lined up for December 1st, from 2 to 4 in the afternoon on that day, the library sponsors their Holly House Tour. I don't have the specifics on the houses that are included this year, but tickets are available, so you'll be able to walk through some very lovely decorated homes from 2 to 4 after Toys for Tots and before the holiday stroll. So that's another uh, wonderful day that we have in town. Um, for the rec committee, thank you to the rec committee for the amazing job that they did at the Halloween hunt. That was another great day in town. The Girl Scouts kicked off the afternoon with their full family festival. This was my first time attending the festival without an actual Girl Scout participating. So I was able to walk around with my son and play some games. Uh, and then we came back later that evening for the rec committee's Halloween hunt. I want to make sure that I thank the Zonta Club for their partnership in that and also DJ Larry uh, for donating his services and, and keeping the music pumping throughout the evening. We also have DJ Joe Bagnetto who graciously donated his time in the afternoon for the Girl Scout Festival. Um, again, I always talk about community spirit and collaboration. That's a perfect example right there of a few different groups working together to create a successful event, bringing our whole community together to enjoy the afternoon. Uh, Rec Committee also reports that as far as upcoming events, their next big event they have on the schedule is Breakfast with Santa, and that's taking place on December 8th. Their fitness programs are also in full swing. I spoke with Karen before I got here tonight. She was on her way to boot camp, and they have between 40 and 50 women attending, which is fantastic. Um, we have a big, if we don't have crazy weather, we, we are supposed to have a big soccer weekend coming up um, and a lot of things going on at the Elks. The Elks Club is bringing back, pending on the weather, their soccer shoot, which they haven't done in quite some time. So that will be hosted there in the afternoon. And then the um, Soccer Association is back at the Elks that evening for their annual soccer social. It usually takes place at the towards the end of the season, so we are winding down. We only have about two or three games left. Um, in addition to that, the Elks also have their pasta dinner and pancake breakfast this weekend. Two great events, very, very good family events to get out to. Uh, and then on a personal note, I also was able to attend with Terry and Eric the Rotary Car Show, and we were honored to be able to pass out the trophies. There were some very nice cars there. It was a lovely afternoon. Uh, additionally, um, for me, I am hosting at Lennox School my last spectacular Halloween kitchen. My son is finishing his last year of Lennox, so I've been the kitchen mom for the PTA for his whole time there, and this is my last year, so it's bittersweet. Um, and I also was able to collaborate with uh, an individual that I'm friends with that is involved with the Patterson Board of Ed. I have a friend that gets a very large donation of costumes that are not going back into storage for um, some of the large costume outfits that sell them seasonally. They had about five or six costumes, various aged boys, girls, that they were not going to be holding on to. So rather than pay for storage, my friend took them and not worked. Five or six. You said five or six. Hundred. Five or six hundred. Five or six hundred. Big difference between five or six hundred. Five or six hundred costumes. Um, and I just received notification today that they work with the Patterson Library and School Six to distribute those costumes. Um, and she sent me some pictures, and it was fantastic. There were kids lined up down the hall of the library waiting to go in and. You know, the school number six in Patterson is one of the, the most underserved schools, so for some of them, this may be the first Halloween that they actually have costumes and, and they'll be able to go out and celebrate. Um, other than that, uh, that is my report. 
You bring back the message to Lennox School that we'd like to have the haunted halls come back for the people that are old enough to have the haunted yeah. halls. The haunted um, halls, that's right. I know that some of the children nowadays get a little scared from the haunted halls, but I will tell you it was a great event. <laughs> I've been partnered every year for 10 years and love scaring those kids. Oh, oh you, were, you were good at it, too. That's probably why it ended, but they Yeah, you were good at it, too, man. Councilman Bennett. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so speaking of community working together, a few weeks ago, um, I attended the, the reception to receive our, um, our, our grant uh, check, quote unquote check, because it's uh, for a thousand and it says bulbs instead of dollars, so I thought it was kind of cool, um, from City Green, from the grant that we filled out called the Big Dig Municipal Beautification Grant, I think it was the title of it. And we could have opted for a thousand daffodil bulbs, I think five thousand or ten trees. And we opted for the thousand daffodil bulbs. We <clears throat> received the grant. I'm still waiting to see their coordinating delivery. And uh, haven't come yet. Any day now, Kevin will receive them. So we've um, scheduled the, the bulb planting. <laughs> are scheduled for Sunday, uh, November 18th at 10 a.m. There's a Facebook event out there on the Pompton Lakes Open Space Committee page, as well as on Black Friday, 11 uh, November 23rd. We're going to turn Black Friday green and plant daffodil bulbs from 2 to 4 p.m. on uh, Friday, November 23rd. So bring your trowels, and if you have a hole digger, um, we're just going to pass out some bulbs, and just it's going to go along the Morse Canal Greenway, as I mentioned in previous council meetings. Uh, unfortunately, that's where we designated to put all 1,000, uh, so they can't go to other parts of the municipality this time around. Next time we fill out a, a grant, um, we'll make sure that other parts of the town are, are, are mentioned and we can uh, distribute them that, that way. So uh, pumpkin painting at the library. I don't think anybody mentioned no, it. Uh, I'd like to thank the Pompton Lakes bid. It was a great turnout, as always. We have, uh, Usually we almost run out of pumpkins, and sometimes we just send out for some more. I think we had enough this, this year. Uh, I want to thank the Pompton Lakes bid and Artastic for, for their time and, and, and putting it together. Um, lots of really art artistic children out there did some really um, amazing work. If you go through Facebook, there's one of me from a couple years ago, and I'm not too proud of it, but it's kind of funny. Um, the Historic Commission meeting was last night. I want to congratulate Laura and Keith on being appointed to the Historic Commission, and we look forward to working with you in, in your new positions. Uh, some exciting ideas. I want to remind everyone that uh, 20, in the year 2020, uh, Pompton Lakes will be 125 years since we were uh, incorporated. So uh, the Historic uh, Commission is looking to for some various ideas or working through some various ideas, uh, one of which is the idea of a historic society. We're all familiar with the Friends of the Pompton Lakes Library, which is the, the fundraising arm or the volunteer arm um, <coughs> who interacts with the, the public more than, than the library board. Uh, historic society would be something similar where we can raise funds for an eventual Pompton Lakes Museum and, and, and have the folks to staff because that's one of the one of the drawbacks or, or one of the challenges is we can have a place to potentially to uh, display these artifacts that are sitting in storage currently, but we don't have enough people to staff the, the potential museum. Um, we're still looking for a Class A member, which is a, an architect or an engineer with a, a background in historic buildings. Uh, it doesn't have to be from Pompton Lakes, I believe, um, but we're still looking for that, for an, a Class A member for the Historic Commission. Uh, last, uh, lastly, about the Historic Commission, there's a historic walking tour of the Pompton Reformed Church coming up on Saturday, November 24th, um, 10 a.m. start time, and there's a whole thing planned out for that as far as uh, the walk and, and, and touring. Apparently, there's catacombs. I go to the church. I wasn't familiar with the catacomb underneath. Uh, so that's it for the Historic Commission. And lastly, at work, I work at UPS in the Information uh, Technology uh, Building in Parship, and we had we hosted the NJ Kick is is how it's called, but it's the New Jersey Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Cell. Um, basically, it's one stop shopping for um, with all this cybersecurity issues going around, data breaches. Uh, Ransomware, malware, people are, are getting hit with them. Um, there's a thing where if you download, well, it's simple as clicking a link on an email that you think is coming from a friend or a peer, and it can download software onto your computer and 
it will lock your files. It's called uh, ransomware. So then they send you an email saying, all right, pay us X amount of dollars, anywhere from 100 to 300. I'm sure folks, some folks in the audience are familiar, familiar with the, the, what the issue is. Um, the problem is you, you pay these folks, and sometimes you won't get the key. If you pay them, you may get the key. Um, what I didn't know is this, this group um, has about 95 or 100, at this point, probably up to 100 of the 215 keys that are out there, so for no charge. So if you do end up with this ransomware, call these folks, get in touch with them, and they'll, they'll help you through it. And who are these folks? These, it's, it's called the it's a state office yeah. called the New Jersey Cybersecurity and, Informa and, and Communications Integration Cell. The website is cyber.nj.gov. And I met the, uh, the director uh, while he was there and uh, got his contact information. And actually, anybody can sign up as a civilian, as a uh, private sector employee if you work for information security for your company, or I signed up as a, as a government um, official and, and I get updates and, and any, any sort of um, uh, warnings and stuff to come out. That's my report. That's yeah, man, it's very good. Uh, they work it's through the state, but they also work with Department of Homeland Security. Right. They also work with OSHA. They work with uh, uh, DEP. A lot of this has to do with uh, dams. It was out not too long ago, a lot of dam safety. They were trying to hack into dams mm -hmm. uh, and different agencies up where I work, even here. Uh, a lot of financial institutions trying to get a lot of records as far as uh, cost. Even a uh, perfect example, the MUA, how they have a billing, you know, if they can send an email down there and get into the billing system and they can somehow steal if they have a, an account, at, you know, Columbia Bank, for instance, they can hack into that. So this is through the state of New Jersey, and it's through, actually, also the FBI is involved with them, too, on a certain couple of task force, and I'm on with them. They're also a part of this, too, with the cybersecurity. Sounds like very good information. I mean, uh, everybody should yeah. have it. Um, that will follow me up into, before we go to Councilman Bay, tomorrow is an uh, alliance meeting at 7 o'clock in the alliance office across the street. Uh, so if anybody's interested in attending uh, that, I would uh, recommend coming coming down there. Councilman Bay. Before Councilman Bay, just to follow up to, to your report, uh, you mentioned the pumpkin painting. In addition to the pumpkin painting, they still have that whole scarecrow contest oh, yes. out. Yes. And the scarecrows um, are, are fabulous. And if you, it, it, I think it was it, it was even more interesting watching them assemble them in terms of the tools and the equipment that people needed to actually display them. But I'm fairly certain that they're that they're still out for everyone to mm -hmm. to view. And some of them are so imaginative. So if you haven't stopped by the library right on their lawn, um, the scarecrows are just are just great. Okay, Councilman Bank. Thank you. I received the Pump and Lakes Police Department report for the month of September from uh, Chief Augusto. There were 1,763 calls for service for the month of uh, September, 521 motor vehicle stops, 258 motor vehicle summonses issued, 18 motor vehicle accidents investigated, two GWI arrests, there were 17 alarm conditions of burglary, 14 alarm conditions fire, 11 fire calls, 63 ambulance requests, 12 burglaries, 8 deaths, 9 domestics, 1 sexual assault or contact, and no aggravated assaults. The Detective Bureau investigated 32 <coughs> complaints, served 49 subpoenas, and they did not serve any warrants for the month. I attended the uh, Ponto Lakes Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting on October 16th. The Chamber received correspondence on the Toys for Toss trains, which was mentioned here. Uh, the train will arrive in town on December 1st uh, at 1.05 p.m. and will depart at 1.50 p.m. The Chamber will be announcing drop-off locations for the to toys in the, this coming November. The bid duck uh, sale was held on October 13th and sold out in an hour and a half. The car show was held on October 14th and was a great success with 291 cars in, in attendance and a great turnout of people uh, to view the vehicles. I attended the Pompa Lakes Planning Board meeting on October 16th, 2018. 
the board reviewed the proposed redevelopment plan for nine Hamburg turnpikes. The board passed a resolution to approve the plan and recommends its adoption by the borough council without change. The board also received a site plan review from the County of Passaic's Department of Planning and Economics Development for Lakeside Commons, 3032 Colfax Ave. With our OEM coordinator, Al Evangelist, and Franklin is also there. We went to the Passaic County OEM meeting today. And last October 17th, Al and I went to the pipeline program. It's sponsored by the Cross Continental Pipeline, and it's a safety program. And we have three lines that run through town here at the end of Akron. And again, as was mentioned, I attended Company 3's pasta dinner on October 20th. I might say the cooks are really good. That's your report? And he wore a white sweater and didn't get any sauce on it. Just two things on the back of our agenda, if anybody looks. Our Veterans Day ceremony is going to be November 7th, 630 in the Lenox School All Purpose Room. Please try to come and support our veterans. They all deserve us to be out there supporting them. We also have a free rabies clinic on November 10th, 1 to 3, and that will be at the firehouse. Did you say free? It's free. It's free. Really? Okay. That's what I'm looking at myself, too. Very good. Is it free? Okay. For all the families, for the cat and dog families. It's free. I'm just double checking. Is that a free shot, rabies shot? So that is a free rabies clinic. There you go. November 10th, 1 to 3. That's a very nice thing we have. Rabies shot. Professional report. Nothing? I have a couple of things, Mayor. Okay. Um, in my report that I sent to the Council, uh, we'll be starting negotiations with crossing guards. That five-year contract is coming to an end. And at the end of this year, we'll be negotiations with them relatively soon. Council received a monthly report from Millennium Strategies, and the Northern Region Education does our IT services. Uh, I attended a pre-construction meeting on the, in the county on both the bridges, the Lakeside Bridge, by the new football field and also Lakeside Bridge over the Ramapo River. And what is our time frame for those bridges? What's that? Do we have a time frame yet? Uh, yeah, after, after, after the, the new year. After the new year. Yeah, because the problem we're going to have is that the Lakeside Bridge here by the field, they have the problem with the actual path and the actual right. footbridge, but they have a lot of construction relative to concrete pouring. They don't want to start doing that and the weather starts to change and it can't cure. We're also afraid they do that. We start salting the roads. We damaged the new, the, the new concrete. So they had the meeting, but we're work it's probably starting in early February in this way into March. So that seems to be the goal for, for those projects. Um, we took our RFQs for our, our, our SIPs grant for, for Shade Tree. Unfortunately, uh, the prices came in way over what we expected. Uh, bottom line is, uh, for the most part, I, I, it was nobody's fault, but I believe uh, the, uh, the Dollar value of John Lewis on the trees uh, is not the current dollar value for the tree stock right now. We just we kind of underestimate the going cost of trees and planting trees um, in, in general. So we'll have to now retool that and decide whether or not we want to try to reduce the number of trees or how we're going to handle that. So that's going to be a, a winter project. So we got to bid and so we have the tree plantings in the spring. I also have already written to the state as an extension because we have to do is plant these trees and have to live for two years. You won't get any money from the state. Oh, really? It takes two years until it takes right? until you get the two-year life cycle. So it's a it's, it's a rather onerous process. So bottom line is that uh, we'll have to retool our, our, our RFQs and go out again the, uh, over the winter. Now, can we, go is it winter. possible to switch for different types of trees within Well, that? that's something John and I have to talk about. Because, again, I don't think you realize when, when Downs actually came in to, to give, give the RFQ, when he, he actually showed up, Jim from Downs, he said that our estimate was not right because when he's out there buying tree stock now, we're probably about hundred dollars short for each tree, which is about right when you figure out we're probably about fifteen thousand dollars over our, 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 our bid number. So um, that's that, that's it's a learning process, and we'll we'll get we'll get our extension. And we'll move forward and we'll finalize that. Um, Grant Avenue we had our pre-construction meeting. 
They're going to start work there in about two weeks, uh, relative to paving on Grant Ave. Um, summer Ave retaining wall, they're also going to start around the same time. Um, and no residents will be notified by the contractors. And the police are going to have the message boards up on a hill just because it's going to have, at some point in time, some traffic detours. We're going to try to keep the road open, one way traffic as much as possible. It'll be a point in time we'll have to shut the road down during the day um, on one of the two contract days, but it, it shouldn't be that that bad. We'll be using hemlock or we won't? Yeah, we will if we have to. That's going to be a game plan, yeah. But we're going to try to keep it so it's always one way traffic because at one point in time we have to get some big equipment in because these, these big riprap rip -rap boulders they're using for, for the retaining water are, are, are going to need some, uh, so, so, some heavy equipment to move them. Uh, we're looking at a, uh, an EDA grant that's uh, for redevelopment. Sue's looking at right now, with the way she's doing so far, it looks like it's mostly for inner cities and cities like Patterson, Jersey City. And we're not quite sure if we'll, if we'll be able to qualify for that. Um, Eck mentioned about the bulb plant thing. State County is starting Office of Tourism, and they're going to be having a forum in January 19 to start asking towns what we do, different programs. Uh, they're also going to try to start doing some signage, like you, like you see in other towns where it says, you know, uh, you know, you know, Ponton Lakes Library, go here, and things like that. So they're going to try very hard to try to start bringing tourism to Ponton Lakes, State County in general. Um, oddly enough, people think the Jersey Shore creates the most economic tourism in the state. That's not true. When you start looking at the totality of tourism, it's little towns like Ponton Lakes and other communities that people come in and. And, and, and visit different historical sites that uh, you know uh, make it uh, worthwhile for them. My only concern with that is, and we've had this in the past, you know, the more signs we get up, as those signs get older, no one seems to be responsible for those signs. And then there's just a big stick sticking in the ground with nothing readable. You can go to form, you can tell them that. Well, I'm going to tell them that because uh, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, someone's responsible for just keeping those signs in place. Uh, Wanakee River is snagging. Um, we have all three rivers that actually started at Wanakee. That project is almost complete now. We're doing some work just below uh, Wilderness Island, and then we're going to start working on the Ramapo, very low on the Ramapo, just kind of down by the MUA, and then we're going to look at the Aquanic. So uh, um, the Wanakee took a lot of work. As you know, all of the last year on Wanakee was almost vanilla. This winter storm just knocked the heck out of the trees along the river. The Canal Greenway project is, is, is starting to wrap up right now. We have uh, our second round of planting is going in, and I actually talked to Ed about we have to assign it up for the, the trees, get them planted, and we have some other kiosks that will be put up, and that should be, 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 be completed. Uh, there's going to be some planting that's going to be done in the spring, and again, that also has a two-year period that the guarantee is on the contractor, so at least in that respect, you know, they're, they're, on, they're on the hook for that. And then the police department monthly report. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to thank the governing body, the staff, and the police department, PBA, for um, kind words and coming to my dad's wake and sending me really nice flowers and so forth. It was, it was very gratifying to my mom, who's still here. Um, when, I, when I gave the eulogy, I, I said that my dad was my dad's my pal. And I've been very fortunate that I'm 58 years old. I've had my dad my whole life. Most young guys, the dads are football coach, the hockey coach, whatever it is, they grow up to be a guy. You go away. I went away, but he was still my friend. I lived locally. We went to football games, basketball games, hockey games. We played golf. At 89, we went to play golf last year. We got nine holes in. 90 years old in January, he went to his last double game. The week before he died, we were planning his next double game because I knew he had blood cancer. I knew he had six months of the year to live. But unfortunately, I guess he got pneumonia and it took him out. But uh, we've done so many miraculous things for me and my dad. So he wasn't just my dad and my pal. And it's, uh, Stuff that guy. Stuff that guy. He lived a good life. I saw all the things he had. So he oh, I always life. tell him, my mom and dad said, You're going to give both a 90. If I live 80, I'll be happy. Right. So, a good life. so I said, You guys got me beat, and you beat, beat the curve. That's beat sure. the curve. That's the key. <laughs> uh, any uh, questions from our administrator? Seeing none. Uh, before we get to open session, I'm just going to remind our residents again that we have a new traffic bureau <coughs> that is dealing with downtown. So keep in mind that you have to put money in the meters at all times. And you will be ticketed if you do not. We're trying to follow, like Council President Riker mentioned, uh, the crosswalks. So make sure you stand the crosswalks. There is a full-time officer down there now, and I unfortunately get calls from residents saying, well, you know, I got a ticket for this, I got a ticket for that. And the first question I said is, but what was he doing illegal? And they say, yes. I said, well, then that's why you have a ticket. So at the end of the day, just keep that in mind. I'm giving you a, a notice 
that they are out there looking for things on the street. Uh, motion to open the meeting for public comments. So moved. Councilman Dwight. Second. <coughs> Council President Riker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Anyone from the public like to address? Please step up. Hi. Uh, Peter Cesat, 314 Ward 1 Avenue. Uh, I'd like to start off by uh, saying my condolences to you, Kevin. Um, one of my oldest friends, his mother, passed away last night, and at the end of the conversation, I found myself falling, uh, just talking to him because uh, his father read me stories until I was about 10 years old. I was going to sleep over his house, and his mother was just fantastic, and I know um, just brought me back to my own father's death, and it, I just lost it. So it's, it's tender. It's very tender. Um, Big bucks. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll attest to my wife wanted to go out and get some. It was the first time that we were actually actively trying to get some. She's like, that line was two hours long. Forget it. <laughs> Turn around and came home. So if we're going to open up more of those, that'd be fantastic. Um, bus Transit Center, where, where are we on that? And is that is that dependent on anything else, like with the redevelopment plan, or is that something that we're thinking? The bus yeah. transit center is not, there's no bus transit center. Well, we were talking, like, for a while back we had been talking about trying to get an express We're trying bus. to get bus, we are trying to get buses to come in, more express buses. Right. The uh, Jersey, um, New Jersey Transit has said when you show us and they do counts on numbers, we will then increase the buses. It's a catch-22, really, because... So, sure, didn't you, hadn't you talked about um, parking in the pond hole for... I, no, not the pond hole. If we were to put a parking garage or structure there, we would consider making some room in the new structure for a, a parking garage. What New Jersey Transit did in their wisdom it was asked businesses to provide free New Jersey Transit parking and maybe they would consider coming there, but no business was taking them up on it because why would the business want to give them free space? Right. So uh, at the end of the day, North Jersey, meaning West Milford area, was looking to try to get a transit stop because there's not many up there either. Right. Um, but New Jersey Transit's argument right now is we can't afford it. That's their argument. Okay. Well, but I would like to have more express busing. Yeah. Were we also discussing the parking in the pond hole for maybe as uh, some of the overflow from the redevelopment no. as well? No. 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 Not, as, 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 as shared, we have shared parking that's going to happen with redevelopment, but that's for residents and, and business owners, people shopping. Uh, busing, no. Now, we had talked about a long time ago, if a structure was built there, we would try to work into that some a bus area to stop where they would pick people up. Uh, that's that's the extent of that. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm almost wondering from a, a demand side point of view and economically, kind of the building when they will come. Thing that if we actually got yeah. right, and I know that you were all saying, you know, uh, I, I believe that there was discussions that if there was a multi-layer parking garage right. there, but you would only kind of do the layers as needed. You wouldn't do five layers at once. You would do it's very expensive. Yeah. Yes, yeah, very expensive. I, I get that. But maybe if, if, if to just at least front that first level and get the, the transit aspect going first, that that may actually kind of be the leading leg to some the, of the other. The town, as a town, can't, it, it's $26,000 a spot to build a park okay. structure. Right. So we're talking millions of dollars. Right. Um, we were trying to get a developer to, to be interested in trying to build spots for himself, but they can't carry that cost either. It's something in the future, as you said, as things grow and get bigger, I think someone's going to have to address the idea of putting a, a structure there. And at that point, if that happens, and, I, and I'm still around, I will push for a transit center within there right. to, to help with that. I'm, I'm still pushing with New Jersey Transit right now to try to get another express bus in town. Okay. Just to, They drive through town. That's the first step, right. And they don't even stop. Right. So how hard is it to stop the bus at a bus stop and pick up more bus people? So they say they have a route and they have to follow it, but it doesn't make sense to me. Well, I guess in some people's minds, if they stop, they are no longer express. But, uh, exactly. <laughs> that's their argument. That's, that's, their, that's their argument. <laughs> um, you work for New Jersey Trend? Is that? No, I, I take the bus every day. I take the bus every day. Um, would that be something worth considering bonding over? Or putting out a bond for? I don't think the public would uh, bond for a garage. You know, that would mean their tax dollars could be affected by that. As far as a tax, uh, as far as a credit rating point of view, or as part of no, not cre our credit rating is excellent. I, I sure. think, I think at the end of the day, if we were to bond just for a structure, 
that it could impact how, how our taxes are used. They could increase our taxes a little bit. And I don't know if residents would support the idea of increasing. For who, who would increase the taxes? I'm sorry. The bond would increase the taxes because at the point you have to pay the bond in the beginning, of the, you know, you have to pay it off yearly. Right, right. So that we'd have to figure out where, <laughs> where's the income coming from that. Well, I would think maybe partially from the parking lot. When it's there. filled, but before that it is not filled. So well, yes, filled. There, would be a, there would be a gap in yeah. time, sure. And that could be a five-year gap. Okay. You know, you know, this development is not happening all at once. They're not building 500 units at once. This is phased in hundred at a time over five or six or seven years. So, you know, the structure, we're going to address the parking, and parking is a big concern. It's a huge concern. Right. We're going to address the parking as the buildings are built. If we have enough parking, we move to the next phase, and then we just see where we're going to get the next parking. At some point, I agree with you, a structure will be needed. Yes. Right. Okay. That's good enough. Uh, Cyber New Jersey, I'm glad to hear about that, because uh, I've had three clients that uh, – were victims of uh, ransomware. Uh, the first one was when ransomware was brand new back in like 2011, 2012. And uh, luckily he had a good enough backup system and we were able to get them all back. The other two were clients came to me after they already had it. One guy I bought the Bitcoin for, and Bitcoin was kind of pretty new at the same time. And I paid it, I paid the ransom uh, on his behalf. And I gotta say, the, uh, the ransomware people's uh, tech support was excellent for their criminal website. It was, it was fantastic. <laughs> And then the third person said, I, I can't afford that, and just uh, opted to lose his data. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public like to address? Step up, please. <clears throat> Randy Hinton, 443 Montclair Ave. As you were saying, that parking is a huge problem for these projects going forward? No, not for going forward, as they develop. Right now, as they develop. develop. Right. Parking is not really a huge problem. It's the problem. Well, there's many problems. Problem. I can and tell you there's a sewer line that's in the way. That's a big the problem. The project right here is 131 parking spots short that we talked about the one evening. Right, but that's Andy. not counting the use of the pond hole. Excuse me? The, the pond hole could pick up some of those type of spots. 131? We have 196 right now in the Ponto. One, two, the developer is aware of that and is in, in the process of looking at other properties to. Uh, so park. correct, parking is the problem for those projects. It's one of the problems. I will say that. Correct. Um, I also attended the car show, the pasta dinner, and the pumpkin painting. All great, all great affairs that uh, that we have in town. They are. And I just want to compliment all involved in uh, in doing that. Um, I was watching. Uh, X kids and Eric's kids paint pumpkins, and uh, they did a great job. Did you were, watch me paint pumpkins? Um, yours was uh, it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, was it was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> um, but also, um, Councilman Bay gave his report on uh, 18 accidents was for the month. Uh, no, you don't have to check it. That's what you said. I, <laughs> but I just want to. Um, I brought this up last year, and I'll bring it up this year, and I will continue to bring it up that we are going into the white-tailed deer mating season, and there's been quite a few accidents already. There was two bucks killed on Hamburg Turnpike. Um, talk, knocking on doors and talking to residents on Rampo Ave, said there was a three-car accident on Rampo Ave involving one deer. It just bounced from one car to the other. So I just want to warn the residents in the town that this mating season is coming up, it's starting right now with this full moon, and it will be for at least another two, three weeks. So be sure. very careful on uh, driving. Um, in your accident report, you don't mention whether it was a deer-related accident. Most of them are. Well, no, of course. There's not 10 million out there, but I mean a lot of them are. And a lot of the residents I've talked to um, have hit deer, and just to be careful at this time of year, um, because they are out there. That is correct. That's good advice. Um, Golden Ages. We just had a trip to West Point. First time I was ever to West Point. Great and place. It was a great experience. You know. you know, the steel on that chain was made right here. I don't know if they told you that. Mm -hmm. Oh, they didn't tell me yeah, that. The chains. The chains that they sh did you go to the chains there? That yeah. was made here in Pompton and Ringwood. Wow. Did Mr. Merrill tell you that? 
No, I knew that from being a Boy Scout. Boy Scout? Always a Boy Scout. Or an Eagle Scout. An Eagle Scout. Also, we were talking about uh, Downs Tree Service, who does our trees in town. And just to make mention that they did donate all the trees again, I will bring that up again for the, uh, for the Eagle Scout yeah. project at the office. And that's this Sunday, actually. This one. There's another one this Sunday. Oh, they're going to have the dedication this Sunday? Uh, that, that Eagle Scout is being made this Sunday, yes. Are they going to have the dedication at the office? Uh, no, uh, d dedication. No, they'll do that another time. He's actually getting his Eagle Award this this yeah. Sunday. And where will that be? Where is it? We got it's an invite. Um, you have to talk to the mother. So All right, I'll call because I've been talking to him. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, nice kid. Real yeah. nice kid. He did a nice job on that. Um, let's see. That is, uh, thank uh, Councilman DeLine for the kiosks. I had, uh, when I was doing tree work on the south end of town, I had mentioned it to you that some of the kiosks were pretty bad and, uh, and uh, for the trails. And it's nice that they're going to give us a key. And yeah, that way we can manage them. Uh, I said we can get to them a little bit easier than they can. So yeah, and clean them up. Yeah. Um, and that's all I really have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to address? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public session? So moved. Councilman Dwan? Second. Councilman Bay? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Approval to the floor. Anybody have approval to the floor? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Move. Second. We're going to all jump at once. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> the Councilman Jack Nettle. Okay. And Venom. Councilman Venom. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.